so I think you are able to see my screen right here, probably. So today we will see uh, an introduction on LLMs or large language models. But as usual, before starting and before going deep, I would like to hear from you if there is anything that you know. Every, uh, actually, there would be something that you know, but what information do you have? Uh, like if there is anyone who have heard or who have some information or idea about LLMs, actually you're using different types of LLMs. Um, like uh, even if you don't know it probably you might also know it but we're currently using different types of LLM so uh, let's hear from you if there is someone who have uh, even the definition who knows the definition actually LLM is the shortest form of saying something so yeah let's hear what uh, you guys have to say or yeah have to say Anyone? Okay, Collins. Okay, uh, good afternoon once again, and uh, welcome to this session, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, LLM is a large uh, language models. Uh, it's an acronym for large uh, language uh, models, and uh, yeah, during the course of uh, week two, we were able to, or personally, I, you know, learned a whole lot about uh, the different uh, LLMs that we have. You know, trying to carry out the task, I was able to try so many of them again because uh, most of them was in a free mode, so sometimes it's uh, limited. So once uh, there's a limitation, I move to the other. So in doing that, I was able to also find out their differences and uh, also be able to uh, discover you know the extent to which uh, their, their correctness for instance in the morning uh, during the meeting i did say that in my own discovery i found out that the cloud if i'm going to go premium definitely i'm going to choose the cloud because of the experience i I do teach them, maybe followed by chat uh, GPT. I tried the one other, I think it's perplex or whatever. So that one was really poor. So again, I was just able to see uh, different types of. Uh, yeah, very LLM. nice comments, maybe. Yeah, I can ask if I can ask, where are you living? So I feel like you're working with clouds, right? So clouds have some restriction depending on countries. So are you using VPN or? Uh, Cloud is allowed in your country. Yes, cloud is allowed in my country. Where is that? Can we ask? Nigeria, Nigeria. Okay, okay. Yeah. We're going to see about it or like for uh, another another of you. We're going to see what I was trying to say. Uh, so, okay. Uh, anyone? Okay, Abraham. Yeah, as uh, my friend says, uh, these are large uh, uh, models uh, who are trained, they are trained uh, on big data. So they can uh, give us answers when we need uh, most of it, like uh, ChatGPT, uh, Microsoft Copilot, OpenAI, and uh, there are so many large. Uh, uh, models uh, we use nowadays. No. Uh, true. So the, what? Uh, thank you, Abraham. Too. So like, what? What are we going to see? See is like as Collins had mentioned. Also as Abraham also had mentioned, we have seen uh, some types of how to use Gen AIs and how to interact with them in the previous uh, week sessions. And today we're going to see uh, what is large language models, which is the backbone of uh, most of the generative AIs that we're using, what is the definition, uh, and things like that. We're going to have the general concept of large language models, and by tomorrow we're going to see how to prompt them, how to use them for a specific purpose, especially uh, since you're supposed to use them for data collection and, and other things. For this week challenge, you're going to collect data using the uh, using LLMs, 
in while learning semi large language models. So yeah, we're going to prompt them and we're going to search using LLMs by tomorrow. So yeah, let's see the introduction. Let's go back to the presentations. So um, we're going to see what LLM is, what the uh, how do LLM works, and some popular LLMs, and uh, like what how are we going to choose the right LLMs for our need and the limitations of LLMs? Okay. So what is LLMs? It's as we have said, as most of you had mentioned it also, they are large language models. It's an advanced type of language models that is trained using deep learning techniques on massive amounts of text data. So I understand that maybe if we're using some uh, technical uh, words, uh, I understand it might be a little bit uh, confusing, but I will try to clarify it. And uh, yeah, second of all, you don't need to worry that much about it, okay? So there's this deep learning techniques that is used to train uh, models or language. So uh, it's just a, like, just keep it like there is, this, this is a method, okay? So at the end of the day, we need a method to train language to, to train a model using language okay so these models are capable of generating human-like text and performing various natural language processing uh, nlp or not natural language processing tasks so a language model can be of varying complexity from simple engram models to more sophisticated neural network models so like i i, I was i'm thinking to just summarize all the synthesis okay so the term large language models usually refers to models that use deep learning techniques to have a large number of parameters which can range from millions of billions and large data these models can capture complex patterns in language and produce that is often indistinguishable from that written humans okay so it is just saying that by well, by saying large language models we're just saying that those are models that will understand our language but it depends so depending on how they are trained so for it there are the simple engram models and also we can go to the sophisticated neural network models that will help us to understand uh as the word uh, to just sophisticate if they are sophisticated um if they are trained in a for sophisticated uh, if they are sophisticated models then they're going to understand a sophisticated language okay it is not supposed to be some easy and common language so it depends okay so that is why there is a difference between different generative ai tools they like we say this one is good for this this one is good for that and things like that because they are all maybe they are all trained using deep learning techniques and they are all trained to understand human language but depends on um, how deep they are trained okay so but it's not like that it's not as we think there are really millions of billions of data they are tra trained over millions and billions of data okay at the end of the day they are functional very functional that is the reason but like when you see it on a are they effective i mean is there effective it's really to have billions of data is really costly right so like to train a model um, at the end of the day on the number of data that the model is trained on will make a difference uh, so it is not that as we think but the more the model is trained the more we will understand the language so for example if it is uh if we want a model to understand the nigeria language it needs to have a billions and more than that uh, data uh, of the nigeria language to train the model mostly this is not even easy to get okay there is a situation called maybe if you have heard there is a situation called there are low resource language models which means uh, those are languages that we're not we're, we're not able to get that amount of data in order to train a model that will understand that language okay english is like one of actually the most uh, 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 rich and resource language model uh, language so that is why most of the models that we use are trained in english and they will understand english they also understand other languages but not as easy as they understand english because those languages are not um, uh, don't have that much or rich resource in order to train train a model. So uh, these models can capture complex patterns in language and produce text that is often indistinguishable from that written by humans. So how does they work, or how do large language model model work? So large uh, LLMs like GPT, which is generative pre-trained transformer, work based on transformer architecture, which you're not going to worry about. It actually, sorry. Yeah, so uh, the simplified uh, explanation is that there is the innovative architecture and the breaking downwards 
understanding words in a sentence, getting specialized and doing tasks, okay? So first, what they're supposed to do is, or their architecture will lead them to understand, to break down the statement. If you have given them a statement, to break down the statement into some concepts, okay? And then they will understand the words in sentence, and then they will get specialized, which means they will get adapted to, um, uh, like, to those kinds of things. Actually, uh, LA limbs will train themselves uh, from uh, the data that we're going to give them to, right? So as like the more we use specific LLM or specific GNI, the more they understand or the more we're feeding data to them, okay? So they will understand words and the same things and then they, they will get specialized on some tasks or they will have, they will collect more data on that specific task and then the, doing the task means uh, doing the things that we have asked them, which is mostly answering or giving us an answer, okay? So uh, there are uh, some popular LLMs or large language models uh, that we're using. So maybe like if I just said, uh, call some LLM, LLMs, you might call like uh, Copilot or some uh, like uh, chat GPT and things like that, okay? But uh, uh, there is in, so like when we say, uh, Am I audible? You guys, am I not audible? Is everything okay? It's audible. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, so what I was saying uh, is, yeah, when we say that, like, when we call some JNI models, it's not those, those, those like, those JNI, uh, JNIs, they are working on a background of something maybe which is a model okay so when we say chat gpt it's like the end product it's not the model the specific model that it is working on is called gpt okay when we say copilot it's the end product so or it's the gen uh, ai tool okay so like when we say LLM, it's on what is the base or what is the models that the gen ai is working on okay or yeah I think you get the point, right? The models, they are somehow slightly actually different from the end product that we're using. So when we say here GPT, one of the popular large language models, just I have assumed that if we were asked to mention some LLMs, we're going to mention like Copilot, uh, Chat GPT, and things like that. But mostly, G, like uh, more accurately, accurately, GPT is the model. So it's the OpenAI is the, de the developers. It has more than 175 billion parameters, which is it is trained on. Uh, yeah, you can jump this and we can access it to API since we're using it like, uh, uh, it's a chatbot, right? You can We can use the chatbot with, use, using API. Yeah. So they have an, their own API. So th this GPT model, there are, um, the chat GPT model, which is without, it's not a model, the chat GPT that we're using, and also even the copilot, it's built on the GPT models. So if you have heard, there's GPT 3.5 and there's GPT 5 now, I mean 4. So it is being updated, okay? It is becoming, it is updating itself because the more they trained it or the, the more they give it data to the model, the more it is, we can call it in, this is GPT-4. So it will have a more function, will be more functional than the previous one, which is 3.5. So both Copilot and G Chat GPT, they use this model, which is GPT. So yeah, uh, Copilot is, uh, uh, it's a Microsoft Genie AI tool, right? So in order to access it, you can, we can go to this link. Actually, if you're on Edge, you can just go to, if you're using Microsoft, you can just, you will get this uh, sign here. Then there is, if you haven't signed in yet, there is the sign in uh, button here and just you will put, uh, sign in, it's easy. Maybe we can try it here. Going through this link. Okay, this is now, since this is another email, I haven't signed in using this. So you will just go to the sign in and whether a personal account or whatever account that you want, you can sign in, okay? And then you can use, you will have this interface, which means, I mean, you can use it without signing in, but it is not going to be flexible or it's going to have a limit. So better to sign in since it's not going to cost you anything. So it, it is just like um, uh, chat GPT, you can just use or prompt the copilot here. And the other one is Gemini. 
uh, Gemini is also developed uh, using uh, developed by Google, uh, like parameters nano available in 1.8 billion and 3.25 billion versions. Others unknown. Okay, there are like uh, there there is like many amount of data that is or parameters that it is trained on as we have mentioned so it's also have an uh, an api but when you are using uh gemini it will uh, let you have it will let you sign in but it also needs uh to be in a specific locations for example it is not uh, available in my country which is ethiopia uh yeah and but we can use vpns for those of you who own countries who are not uh, uh, like who, who found any uh, places that are not Gemini and like some AI tools are not allowed. So you can just use a uh, uh, VPN and then you can change your location so that you will be able to uh, access any type of uh, GNIs. Okay. So maybe I think it's, uh, I have just signed in here. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you will after signing in, it's not going to be uh, that uh, complicated process. Uh, it's not going to ask you for phone and things like that, but just have a VPN and you will be accessed here. I have just asked it to resonate some my data since it's going to be uh, a yeah, general knowledge that we, we will like as an African that we will all have. So it gave me those answers. So this he's an amazing person and things like that. So you can expand uh every synthesis so google search found similar content like this so since it's streaming as, as i've told you it's a uh, google's product it, it have uh, an access to uh, or an access for google's api so it can also merge its data uh, to google's okay and then there is cloud which we were uh, uh, talking about uh, earlier it's developed by Anthropic Cloud, Cloud to it have its own API. We can access it, but specifically, this also needs its own. Um, I mean, different to be to like it expects you to be in a different in some specific locations. Actually, again, it is not allowed in my country, but I have tried to log in using VPN. But it, it was asking me uh, a phone number. But uh, by tomorrow, we will be able to. Uh, this is Copilot. This is Cloud. We will be able to give since it is asking a phone number. I'm not sure if I am, uh, like, we're supposed to use this, right? Whether it is in our country or not, we need to use it, we, even if it is the right way or maybe if it is uh, the wrong way. Since we're supposed to use it, we are going to use a fake account or fake phone number for this to log in. And we will also see that by uh, uh, how to, like, sign in to cloud. Since it is being said that cloud is uh, becoming the computator or the great computator of uh, GPT from all the models, okay? So also, um, I think Collins was mentioning the functionality, so he had tried it, uh, how functional it is. And then there is the Lama model, which is uh, developed by Meta. Uh, it is just open, to, so so you're going, to, you're, you're going to be able to find the model. Like I have mentioned, uh, you can find, I mean, there is a model called GPT. Uh, like just like that you, you are you are able to find the model lama not an api what is the difference is if, if it is an api you can just get the the page or like to the piece to chat and you can use that tools but if it is an open which is if you you're able to find the model and using the model you can make your own chat words or things like that okay so maybe to find the models that is going to be heavy but as i have i think we've seen it lastly we uh you can go on to Hugging face. So have I logged in using this? I'm not sure. Yeah, here you can, as I've told you, you can find some modules that are uh, loaded here. So it's called Lama. So you can see like the words that you that you will see here as Lama, Lama, Lama. Those are people, so like uh, normal individuals that have used this model in order to build their own chat bot, okay? Maybe for uh, text generation and things like that. But the, the model itself is Meta. Yeah, you can just, since it is uh, owned by Meta, 
it's here meta lama so it's have the latest 3.1 uh, the latest model is 3.1 it have downloaded like 164,000 and more downloads last month so yeah if you have got this so it means you can download the model itself but uh, and then you can use it for your own use it means if you, do you get my point like people or it people will make their um, chatbot or another ai tools using those models which are already building because it is difficult to find your own data that amount of data to build a model you can use models that are already built like llama okay uh, and then there is there is the uh, gork which is uh Grok is not this is not the right spelling is Grok q right so uh this is uh, recently, uh, this model is recently uh, being available uh, by most of you probably know Elon Musk. So after owning uh, the Twitter and things like that, so it's, he had made it this model, it, it's really fast. And it's also open source, you can get all the codes that have built this model, but uh, in order to log in, you can just go better. You can get to the account of everything that we have mentioned by going to this link, but specifically for this in order to make in past entrance, you can just go to the link that I have put it here, and there is Grok. I had opened it here. It will bring you this type of uh, opening. Okay, so it's you can put your questions here, but to have more, uh, I mean, to go more than trying or deep, you can just go to the start building page, and you can have your conversation here. Okay, what are like? Let's just ask what are the top ten cities in Africa. And if we can click the submit button here, submit. And we can get the answer here. Here is Lagos, Cairo, Kinshasa, Cape Town, Dar es Salaam, Kumashi, Kumasi, I guess. So like it's all mentioned here, it's really fast. If you've noticed, it's really fast, but it, it, it also have its own, uh, disadvantage but one of the things that Grok is known for is its speed okay so you can get this and another different types of um, these are one of the main uh lla models that we're using so uh we've talked about um all those uh, models and they, they use different uh i mean they use they use like they are genii that there is also the product and there's also their own models or so that are that they are built upon So uh, I really need to ask you if there is some question or confusion. So do you understand what we have seen or what we have talked? Anyone? Do you have a question on things that we have seen? Okay, Tabin and uh, Tafara, they, it, it's clear for them, but what about others? Are we good? Okay, Wendy. Tarrafa has a question. Okay. Tarrafa, yeah, I have uh, one question. Thank you for uh, your uh, presentation. Um, okay. My question is this: uh, uh, these models, you know, large language models, are you know they are designed to uh, respond or to communicate or to uh, browse or search many things for uh, humans, but uh, since they are large but in some case they are limited i don't know maybe it is because of uh, their limitation on the number of talking you know sometimes uh, when you uh, ask some uh, questions there is a limitation maybe is it because of being the uh, free version or how how they are limited because when we start from their name of course they are large models large language models but there is a limitation so why it's so thank you yeah that is uh, right Tarata. we were also about to mention on the next page on the limitations of uh, llms they're not perfect you know even if they are trained on this amount of data and things like that even if they are complicated they're not perfect uh, one of them as you have mentioned is we're, we're using the 
uh, free, uh, most of us are using the free version, which is the paid version are more powerful than this. Um, also, it's just, you know, it's having the, that amount of deep data uh, will make them to be confused the way they are uh, the way they are built, they it will make them confused. But also, uh, for what things are you are you using that uh, AI tool? Maybe you need to uh, specify that if that uh, LLM is like very well trained in order to recognize image, then uh, you don't you do not need to use that type of LLM for uh, or GenAI for uh, conversations to create conversations, even if they can understand the, what we are saying. Okay, so my point is like you are right. So the method that we, we that we will use to reduce those types of error is by choosing the right type of LLM for our purpose, and then by choosing uh, the right type of prompt or by asking them the right type of prompt, trying to do that also will minimize the error. I think we've seen uh, last uh, in the last. Uh, in the first week, I guess, how to write uh, a good prompt, right? The slide would include key features, each LLM is built. Okay, uh, for now, they're not included because uh, we're going to see oh, that the tomorrow session also will be on searching on uh, LLMs and prompting. Okay, before coming to actually uh, Dorcas questions, yeah, I was just answering uh, Tarafas, so yeah, by using uh, the right type of prompt and by using that the right type of LLMs for the right type of uh, question we have okay we'll try to minimize those type of errors by this kinds of way and for Dorcas you're right I will try to mention uh, what type of uh, like from by like just by my mouse what type of for what type of thing is this thing good but uh, we will include those types of things in detail by tomorrow's session, but honestly, for the if we are looking for the conversational and for the, I have also mentioned it on the last week's challenge. Okay, Rokas, thank you. Uh, on the last week's challenge for like conversational types of things and for report writing, we're going to, the GPT models are preferred. Mostly the GPT models are preferred. When we say the GPT models, we, it includes the chat GPT JDI and the copilot, also as we have seen. Copilot is also using the GPT model, uh, and specifically, the Copilot is good in uh, in the data thing, in the data collections and other things. Also, in for example, if you're about to use uh, image distribution, which is not going to be that important for you for today or like for for uh, for Wednesday submission, but uh, there are uh, GenAI tools that are called I mean models that are called like stable diffusion model. Uh, okay, they will, for example, Gork is the worst, the worst uh, LLM uh, to use for image generation. So you're not going to dare to use LLM, uh, Gork for image generation. But if you are, yeah, seriously, it's really, I have a trauma. Uh, if you are using, but if you are, if you need something to, uh, like to, if you are trying to have an answer for something very quickly, then Gork will be the best. Okay, so we're going to see, I'm going to go through deeply uh, on these futures and parameters for yesterday's session. I mean, tomorrow, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, so as ha they had uh, already mentioned, uh, we sorry, have just... Please, uh, okay, I, I, sure. So, so, sorry, I have a question, sorry. Okay, uh, Collins, I'm to, very uh, sorry, I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so Go it's ahead. fine, it's okay. Yeah, please. I, I just want to know so far, like we mentioned about the uh, three models that's uh, the GPT, the API, and uh, the open open model. I believe those are the three you mentioned. So I just want to know if those are the uh, three models that uh, form all the all the uh, the AIs we have, and then what are their key distinguishing uh, factors between them. Uh, I hope if it is not my network. I think Did you, you get my question? You were breaking on the last. Uh, okay. Things. I, 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 I okay. Maybe if you can hear me, if you why uh, were you asking to elaborate the difference between the open and the API, the difference between the two? Were you asking for that? The, the, 
the, the three, yes, the three, GPT, API, and uh, Open. I think those are the three you mentioned. So I don't know if there are clear differences that, that one may need to know. And then secondly, I say if that is the only three we have or there are other models. Actually, okay, API is not a model, okay? When I say API, we can access those models which, which are mentioned here, like the GPT model through an API. So API, it's like... Um, it's like what can i say it's you can use some application or some software if they by using their apis okay so if like they have an api means they have uh, we have like access for the, their deployment if they deploy their work we're going to be accessed their work through an api so we can gate them just like this you can access uh child gpt copilot is accessing i mean gpt copilot access accessing gpt you also we can also access gpt models okay it's an open source so there is the, the, this company open ai so they will put an api to access those models so you're going to pay for them actually and uh, like for another models for gpt4 you, you also you, we need to pay only the free one is 3.5 so for accessing those types of models we're going to use api but API is not a model by itself, okay? Colin, uh, who asked the question? Colin? Colin, is that clear? Yes, Colin, thank you. Abraham, yeah, application program inter interface is what API is. So it will help us to access another uh, software on other words. So like when I say, when I was talking about Llama, if you noticed, we, we don't have in an API for Llama, we, could, we just say that they are open because we could, you can just go and access the model itself, okay? You can download the model itself and you can just use the model. You cannot use the model through an API or through some link or through some connection. There's no connection to access Llama, but you can download the model and we can you can add your own future. You can change them to, maybe you can train them on more data uh, in order to change their structure. For example, if you have, if it is just a natural, if it is just a model that will understand English, you can make it to, and bring it to a model that will understand um, advertisement. Okay, so if you have trained it in a model like this is advertisement, this is not advertisement. And if you have trained it that way, it will become a model that that can de de demonstrate or distinguish between advertisements and non advertisements. So you can use it by downloading the model since the model is open. That is the difference. Open and API are the characters of the model. GPT, Llama, Cloud are the, the name of the models. Okay. Uh, Collins, are we clear now? Okay. Very nice. Okay, Collins. So, uh, choosing the right open source LLA for your needs. So, what concepts are you supposed to keep in mind? So, you're supposed to think for this week challenge, there is this specific thing that we're going to use the I'm sorry, the uh, LLM support, which is for collecting data and for making some analysis. But for another days, you, you might want them to do another thing, another task, okay? So you need to, um, every day you need to distinguish what do you want to do and why do you need an LLM? Is that for analysis? Is that to, in, like, is, are you trying to just uh, rewrite your words or to make grammatical, uh, 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 yeah, to just make your grammars right and how much accuracy do you need, okay? How much money do you want to invest? Can you achieve your goals with pre-trained models, which means uh, rather than using the models itself, there are uh, like pre-trained models. You take the models, as I've mentioned before, we can just take Llama and we can, we can train them on another data and they're called pre-trained models. So can you achieve your goals with the pre-trained models by using them? So you need to differentiate those types of questions, okay? So yeah, just we need to keep in mind here. So this might will help you on writing your the one page summary or reports about LLM, uh, just to introduce a LLM for your friend. That is how, that is what it is, that is what it's expected from you, right, I guess. So yeah, you can use those informations for that also for another use or for, uh, while using LLM, you need to make sure for, for which purpose am I using that LLM. So as Tara had mentioned, there is a limitation and there is a challenge, of course. What are the limitations? The first one is hallucination. Sometimes, I don't know, 
it's not I, I don't know it, GPT models like they really want they really love to guess so a hallucination is when a little produce an output that is false or, or that doesn't match the user's intent so uh, mostly if they are not matching our users in our intent we might say that okay my prompt my prompt is wrong and things like that but Sometimes they will just guess something that they don't know, okay, which is called a real hallucination. So it's not just, it's not only false, but they're not aware of the things that they're saying. So in that case, we can say that the LLM is hallucination, and hallucination is one of the most mistakes that we get while using the hallucinations. And most of the prompt engineering and uh, like putting our uh, equations or prompts in a right way is made or is built for decreasing the hallucinations, okay? Uh, and then there's the security. LLMs present important security risk when not managed or surveilled serve, properly. And there's the BIAS, which is another pro problem. Yeah, mostly the security is not going to be our problem, okay? But the BIAS also, if you're comparing two things or if you're asking if uh, something is good in, is this thing good at on this and things like that, if you are asking for a decision or judgment, which means, so it might make it be as, uh, be as, okay, the data used to train large language models will affect the output given model produced. As such, if the data represents single demographic or lacks diversity, the output produced by LLMs will also lack diversity, which means uh, I doubt, okay, we, we, we are for sure going to try it by tomorrow. We are, we're going to ask for Cork, which is Elon Musk's model, uh, if to tell us the negative things about Twitter, okay? And also, we're going to ask the Gemini, which is uh, lastly called Bart, and which is developed by Google, if there is a negative thing about Google. And we will see what they will say. But, you know, I don't expect if that, that they're going to say something negative about their mother company. <laughs> but we're going to see. So the bias is if, if the data they are trained on is biased, then they're going to produce an output that is biased. But not only depending on the data that they have trained, also on our prompt. Okay, it is somehow uh, approximately uh, related with hallucination, but if the question that we, like, while prompting the question, if the question is somehow hallucinated or biased to some uh, thing, like, what do you think about, what do you think about comparing this and that? But I think this one is better. If you're going to, if you're going to say it like this, if the model is not very sure about it, it is going to give us an output that is approximately same with our question. Yes, you are right. This one is better, okay? So uh, we, we will try to minimize biasness as much as we can in our points. Okay, so the scaling, it can be difficult in time and resource consuming to scale and maintain LLMs. So in order to use it for our source, in order to uh, load the LLM by itself, it might be very difficult. It can be very difficult. Then. And then also deploying is really needs a very complicated knowledge and also space and, uh, things like that. So it is going to be the deployment is also very complicated. So those are the limitations, but the limitations that will directly affect our work mostly is the hallucination and the bias. So while prompting and while using LLMs, we will try to decrease those aspects. Okay, guys, so any question? Any question on, whole, on the whole uh, uh, summary? Oh, there are uh, lots of people who have been talked Maybe it will be good to hear your voice or just to read what you've written. So, any question? Have you understood or the concept? Can we say that it's clear? Okay, Tarapan. Okay, Abraham. Abraham, have some questions. Rudolf, okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, the, the weekly challenge, uh, I mean, the goal of the weekly challenge is to uh, search those LLMs and to acquire a data from them, uh, or uh, is it uh, rather than acquiring uh, to analyze the data, uh, which is the purpose of the challenge? Okay, as mentioned, I think this was mentioned on the introduction, we can just go to the challenge definitely again, but uh, it will be uh, uh, one of the things, one of the main tasks that you will do is to collect the data through LLMs. One of the main tasks or the phase one will be collecting the data, but we can go on for...
so it might be hard for me to get the okay. Let's find the Chinese the document. So the first is to gather the key financial indicator, which is you're going to use those prompt or these are some kind of hints. So using those uh, prompts on Copilot, if you prefer, you can also use another browser, but yeah, I think it's better to use Copilot and you're going to collect the information. And the second one is to analyze the key financial indicators. So you're going to pick the three financial indicators, rate graph, one graph for each indicators, extract the data, Company select the data, highlight the data range that includes the indicators, insert the graph. Okay. So you're going to do the graph based on the data that you've collected from Anneli Lim, which is mentioned as mentioned before, which is going to be the main, uh, like one of the phase that you're going to use the Anneli uh, for, but. The second part, which is the analysis part, one of the methods that you will use to analyze the data is to draw the graph for the analysis, right? Which is, you're going to do it using Google Sheet or something that you want. I think it is said like that on the introduction session. Uh, so what I can understand from this is customize the chart, label the axis appropriately, finalize, adjust the other chart setting as needed, uh, click then, inside the company feels most likely so it's not in mess so if i'm mistaken you might also uh, uh correct me but it's use an id link to generate the recommendations yeah here is where uh formulate your prompt write a clear and concise prompt that include the key points you want in the recommendation uh so write a one paragraph recommendation for this company explaining why it is the base which is also it's going to be so this question this question or this prompt is used to as asked in order to have a good suggestion or a good part of a specific company which is also considered as analysis okay so um on a summary to summarize our analysis we're going to use those prompts and we're going to use uh, uh the use of ais but also we're going to uh we're going to do we're going to do some graphs and things like that by ourselves so that to see some part of the analysis it says generate a one paragraph recommendation you can use a link for this for your boss instead this should answer the following question which company do you recommend and things like that so in order to go this in order to ask this prompt you need to give it the data that you have collected okay so the first part is to um yeah the first part is to collect the data and based after collecting the data properly and after labeling them you're going to use the same data that you have generated in order to for the LLM as an input in order to generate an answer or an analysis so you're the answer is going to be yes you're going to use the aid of uh, LLMs for the analysis but you're also makes a, you're, you're going to make the graphs and draw the graphs and you can see some of the analysis by yourself too okay Abraham, have I answered your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The brief explanation. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Another question? I have uh, one question, uh, not sure. on the presentation, uh, actually. I have asked it on the Slack, but uh, I didn't get an answer. Uh, uh, I get this opportunity from uh, someone who shared us on the Telegram group and uh if you have any information uh, you can give us uh, who is organizing this program and uh, what is the benefit of the organizers or or is it uh, sponsored can you tell us about it okay uh i might not be the right person to talk about this but uh, this program like as of uh, uh, by position and my knowledge this program is prepared in order to give knowledge of ai and in order how to integrate them with project management and other tasks so in order for people who are uh, non-technical or who are not working on a on the technical aspect of the 
uh, AI or coding or things like that. So how can we integrate? Since it's very important nowadays to use those types of tools, this program is made in order to integrate or in order to make our project management probably to make it on a more fascinated or enhanced way. So that is the purpose and the goal of those product. Uh, I mean, pro this program. That, and that is what I can say, Abraham. But for brief explanation of this, like of uh, this kind of questions, which are which are not technical, maybe you can tag Magda at uh, Magda Schmelis uh, at Slack, and also you can DM her, and I am sure that she will give you a detailed information about that, Abraham. Okay. 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 So, okay. Another question. So I'm about to stop sharing my screen, hoping that there's like guessing actually, not hoping that there's nothing that will keep that will. So like, can I stop presenting? Okay, thank you everyone. We will meet uh, by tomorrow for another like for the detailed explanation or actually for the usage of the LLMs. Okay, goodbye everyone. Thank you.